Here's the horizontal dissection. So you can see we cut the brain horizontally right about there, right through where you would find the insula. This is, of course, the dorsal half, but you would see the same structures here, more or less, if you were looking at the same cut but the ventral half. First off, you can see the cerebral cortex here. Thin, continuous sheet of gray matter covers each cerebral hemisphere. It's one continuous sheet, folds in and out, in and out, in and out. Where it folds in, it's a sulcus like that. Where it folds out like this, it's a gyrus. Underneath there, you have the white matter, mainly made of axons, myelinated axons. And then right here, you've got some white matter that crosses right over the midline of the brain. This is part of the corpus callosum. This is the anterior most part of the corpus callosum, which is called the genu. Just caudal to that on the midline, you've got the fornix. Just caudal to that, you've got the thalamus right here. <clears throat> and now that we've cut through the thalamus, you can see some of the individual nuclei, the chunks of gray matter that make up the thalamus. In fact, right here, you're seeing the lateral geniculate nucleus right there and right there, that thalamic relay for vision. Visual information in the form of action potentials, encoding what you're looking at, what you're seeing, comes in, makes the axons of the optic tract, make a synapse with these cell bodies here, these somas, whose axons then form the optic radiations and carry those signals back to primary visual cortex. Here you've got the pineal. Then on either side here, you have the hippocampus. Remember that the hippocampus kind of encircled the lateral surface of the thalamus when we were looking at the hippocampal dissection. Now that we've cut through the hippocampus, you can see it was surrounded by ventricle, except for right here, where it was almost continuous with the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex kind of folds under and becomes the hippocampus. This little chunk of gray matter here and here is the caudate nucleus, or at least it's the head of the caudate. The caudate is actually a, a pretty long nucleus. It has a tail that wraps uh, sort of around the ventricle that you can't see at this, from this view. Just lateral to that chunk of gray matter is another chunk of gray matter right there. This is the putamen and the globus pallidus. There are two separate structures in there but you can't really tell them apart when you cut the brain this way, and especially without uh, thinly slicing it and staining it. But there are two separate gray matter structures in there called the putamen and the globus pallidus. So if I put a pin right there, you should name them both, putamen and globus pallidus. Just lateral to that is this crisp white matter line right there. You can see it right there. That's a useful landmark. The gray matter just medial to that line is the putamen and globus pallidus, as I mentioned. The gray matter just lateral to it, right here, kind of a thin strip of gray matter, not much wider than the end of my probe, that's going to be the claustrum. The claustrum, the putamen and globus pallidus, and the caudate are all part of the basal ganglia, also called the basal nuclei. You can see, see the same structures on the other side. Here's the putamen, I'm sorry, the caudate, right here. There's the caudate, the putamen and globus pallidus. There's that crisp white line, a useful landmark. This chunk of gray matter here is the claustrum. Just lateral to that is the insula. So this chunk of gray matter here, this piece of cortex, is the insula, or insular cortex. Here it is on the other side. Caudate, putamen and globus pallidus, crisp white line, claustrum, insula. <clears throat>